Content with Deaf, my first DXM trip. Yo, what's up? It's someone that's someone, and welcome back to today's report. Today's report was sent in by Shane. When this happened, February 3rd, 2019, the drugs used, DXM and cannabis, at a dose of 10 to 12 fluid ounces of DXM and 1.5 grams of cannabis, the route administration, orally and smoked, gender, male, weight, 145 pounds, age, 22, first prior experience, alcohol, cannabis, and tobacco, for his set, possibly bipolar, and the setting, on a trail out with nature, then at home. Alright, so here we have another first dive into DXM. Shane decided to dive into a third plateau experience for his first time. He notes that he had been wanting to switch it up from alcohol and smoking tobacco, and this was his option. Now he does mention LSD in this briefly, so this may not be his first tripping experience, but it seems to be one of his most powerful ones yet, one that presented a lot of ego loss for him. Besides that, he does add a pretty fresh perspective. He spends some of this with his roommates in college, from what I can tell, but a lot of this is filled with personal exploration, fueled by internal hallucinations and music enhancement when he ends up home. Either way, this is a pretty classic DXM report, and one that's introspective. I'm sure you'll enjoy this, so without further ado, let's dive right into this. I had just turned 22 a few weeks before the experience, and I decided that it was time for me to stop drinking alcohol and smoking tobacco, as I knew that drinking was an issue in my life. I was at the time a daily weed smoker, and I was at the point of wanting to try something new to keep things a little interesting. Going to college in the northern woods of Wisconsin, psychedelics were very hard to come by, and I had no connections. After finding a video online explaining what DXM is and what it can do, my curiosity got to me, and I decided to pick up two 8-ounce Robitussin bottles at the store. The experience I am going to focus on is the 10 to 12-ounce trip. The night before this, I had experimented with a really small dose, maybe 4 ounces tops, to see what would happen. This is all, of course, after doing research on what kind of Robitussin to buy and how much to take based on weight, gender, etc. What I got from the micro trip were faint audio hallucinations and feeling a bit clumsy. At one point, walking downstairs to see two of my roommates making out on the couch, and it taking me a second to realize that before going back upstairs. That's all I can account for for that trial, besides playing pool during the come up with my roommates at a nearby bar. On to the actual trip. This took place on a foggy Sunday afternoon and evening. Preparation included. Writing signs throughout the house on notebook paper, saying, If you're reading this and scared, you're tripping and will return to your normal self soon, or something along those lines. At about 3.30, I took my first dose, which was about 4 ounces of the remainder of the bottle from the night before, and was making plans on what to do during my come up. After consuming the robo, I thought it would be nice to take a walk. And as I was thinking of this, my roommate and his girlfriend were planning on walking around the forest a little north of her college house. With that, I had asked for a ride, and after them saying yes, I went downstairs to have a bowl of weed in our house smoke room. This also greatly helped with the stomach discomfort during the come up, as I have never thrown out DXM. Proceeding, we left for the forest, and they dropped me off at what we call the Sculpture Park, which has sculptures made from university students throughout the years as they went off to walk by the lake with their dog. During my walk, I had my headphones in, listening to The Tallest Man on Earth and his record, There's No Leaving Now, a lovely little folk record. The walk itself was splendid, as it was in the mid-30s, which was rare for February Wisconsin, and with it being foggy, it gave my surroundings a very eerie vibe, but at the same time, beautiful. About an hour after taking the robo, I noticed that I had felt a different kind of high than I usually feel, slightly floaty and my vision a little blurred, but nothing unpleasant. After walking around the sculpture park loop, I made my way to the trails by the lake where I found my roommates. We decided to go on the frozen lake and I was running around with the dog just having fun chasing each other. I remember feeling pure bliss and euphoria start to come in. Part of this was the come up and most of it was just having fun with her golden retriever. At about 5.30, when it got dark, we left and went back to the house. After going inside, I decided to down the second bottle of Robitussin in one sitting. I don't exactly remember what I had been doing during the come up for an hour or so. But then, it hit. At about 6.45, I 
I started feeling full of effects. What I had seen to be what would become a high third plateau. I was unable to talk, walk, or piss. And with that, I went downstairs to our house smoke room. The room, no larger than a standard bathroom, itself was completely vibed out and had moo lights throughout and a futon and table where we put all of our weed stuff, along with some odd accessories that made the room very cozy and colorful. At this point, I knew that weed would make things interesting, so I packed a bowl's worth and smoked it. And then, it was blast off. I knew that this was going to be intense, and I thought that the best way to approach this was to go into a meditative state with my eyes closed and my headphones on. Doing so, I sat on the futon, putting a blanket on me, and sitting in the crisscross applesauce position. I was ready. The effects were pure bliss. I felt like I was in a warm bathtub floating on a cloud. And the weed only helped. It felt like a huge wave of euphoria that felt like I was soaring up past mountains. Again, it's hard to explain. Then began the closed eye hallucinations and the out-of-body parts of the experience. I put on an album from the instrumental post-rock band, This Will Destroy You, Young Giant, and felt what I would consider my first time facing ego death. I had some closed eye visuals. What I can remember is that I was placed in this open field of dirt under a tannish gray sky where I was alone and I couldn't picture or hear anything else. I felt the idea of the fear of death lifted from me. After the record finished, I felt content with the idea of death, and that if my time was to come during that moment, I would be completely fine with it. A side note, a feeling that I notice with DXM is that I get really sad when a record finishes. It's as if it's a book closing, your favorite TV series ending, or as if someone you knew had just died. I tried to go upstairs to use the bathroom and process these feelings, but that just didn't happen after about 5-10 to 10 minutes of trying, only to see myself in the mirror and experience what people have said about seeing yourself in the mirror on DXM. I saw small swirls in my face as if I had a small LSD dose, and noticed more saturation with the colors, such as red and blue. With that, I went back downstairs and placed myself back in the blankets to put on another record, Nick Drake's Pink Moon, a sad man with his acoustic guitar for 30 minutes. Being a very depressing record, and with me facing a lot of depression during the time, being off on my bipolar cycle, I connected with it more than ever. The last song, called Friend in the Morning, I felt as if the singer was telling me not to dwell on this record along with my depression, and instead of feeling that sadness from listening to it, to go and live your better life away from it, and that the record will always be there for me down the road if I need it. I hallucinated him waving goodbye to me as the last song was ending, and that he will be there for me when I need it. One of the more powerful moments during this trip. The next record was Fleet Fox's self-titled record, yet another folky record. This is where the closed eye hallucinations became more distinguished, since I believe that I smoked a small bowl of weed before going into this phase of the experience. I was placed in a very forested and mountainous rocky area full of caves, where in some places a person will be playing a trumpet or horn on the tops are indents of them, and that every sound seemed to echo off of each other by nothing before. Again, the record ended, and I felt sad and empty with that being so. Following, I put on Led Zeppelin's House of the Holy, and was taken to this open desert with water in some areas and stones by the water. Just look at the record cover, and it looked exactly like that. That's something I noticed as well with DXM. If you were listening to a record, the closed eye hallucinations would take you to where the album cover looks like. At this point, I knew I put on more music, but I don't remember what they were. All I knew was that I sat in the crisscross position with my eyes closed and blankets covering me for almost four hours, only making movements to change the music. After smoking another bowl, I developed sensory hallucinations in which I felt like there was a celebration going on around me. Some of the closed eye visuals that went along with this was that I was placed in this place where there was a waterfall nearby and I was along a river with a bunch of native individuals all covered under a setting sun behind the waterfall. Picture the scene in The Lion King where Simba goes with Timon and Pumbaa to the jungle to go grab grubs and hang out as Simba ages. With this, I was with this tribe and we were sharing food, water, and other items in a shared space of harmony within this space. My body felt like they were celebrating me. For what, I am not sure of but everyone was smiling at me and just appreciating me. I think it opened my eyes in a sense that more people care about me as a whole than I thought. 
Since I faced a lot of self-loathing during this period of my life and thought I was hated and ignored. This feeling lasted for at least a couple hours and the visuals changed to where the many people I was with by this riverbed started to get up and leave. However, each one of them came from behind me, placed their hand on my shoulder and nodded at me, almost as if they were satisfied with me and wishing me the best of things, and walked away in front of me. This went on in a loop for 45 minutes. As more people did the same thing, the people's figure had changed into where they were turning into shapes and the color of them changed to black. Not like a black individual, but like the color. Picture Mr. Game and Watch in this case, but more shape based. The color became incomprehensibly black that it felt like if you looked at it too long, you were staring right into death. This part represented the countdown of my experience, as it was getting near midnight. After things settled down, I smoked a small bowl and went outside and walked around my neighborhood for a little while, feeling as if the celebration feeling was still going on. I eventually went inside and still had some sensory effects and closed eye visuals, and eventually fell asleep at about 2.30 that morning. The next morning, I felt great and refreshed with no hangover. This trip had helped reduce my depression tremendously for a while, but this substance should not be misunderstood as a depression treatment but a tool to use sparingly to see yourself from outside your body and to put your ego aside are to battle it. With that, thank you for allowing me to share my trip report.